Hello, this is the first in a set of eight videos on the early psychologists whom Morton Hunt calls the measurers. We start off with three videos on Francis Galton, the effective founder of the study of inherited individual differences. Then a video on Alfred Binet, the creator of intelligence testing, and finally four videos on the mental testing movement in the United States. As in the other videos for this course, our textbook is Hunt's book, The Story of Psychology. You can find the reference to that and the links to other videos in the series in the notes below. Francis Galton was a Victorian polymath, now best remembered as the inventor of eugenics, but he also had a major influence on the early development of psychology. Born in 1822 in the English Midlands, Galton was a precocious child who had learnt to read English when he was two and a half years old, and by six had already started to learn Latin, Greek and French, do long division, and read Shakespeare, Alexander Pope, and other English classics for pleasure. He hated the narrowness and brutality of his boarding school, with its emphasis on rote learning, and its suppression of the boy's natural curiosity and independence, and was somewhat surprised that his fellow pupils had never even heard of the Iliad. During his teens, at his parents' urging, he studied medicine for two years, but then gained entrance to the University of Cambridge to pursue his own interest in mathematics. Feeling that he needed to excel, he became obsessed by examinations and his standing relative to other students. When he failed to rank at the very top of the list of his final year, he appears to have had a nervous breakdown, developing palpitations and dizziness. Unable to concentrate, he could sometimes hardly look at a book, settling for a mere pass degree in order to graduate. It must have been a bitter disappointment. He then briefly returned to his medical studies, but the death of his father in 1844 left him financially independent with no further need to study or work. Now 22, he spent the next few years living the life of a gentleman, riding, shooting, and attending parties, but this did not satisfy him. Foreign travel was more interesting, and in 1845-46 he embarked on what would then have been quite an adventurous journey to Egypt, and then up the Nile to Khartoum, and on to Beirut, Damascus, and the Jordan. In 1850, now in his late twenties, and after consulting with the Royal Geographical Society, he financed and led a two-year expedition to what is now Namibia, part of Africa which was almost unknown to Europeans at that time. He returned to Europe with a reputation as a resourceful and intrepid explorer, and brought back a wealth of cartographic and other information. Aged only 31, he was awarded a gold medal by the RGS, and was also honoured by the French Geographical Society. In 1853 he married and effectively settled down, devoting the rest of his long life – he died in 1911 at the age of 88 – to his diverse scientific interests and to invention. He also wrote, with his first major book appearing in 1853 on his travels in Africa, followed in 1855 with a general guide to the art of travel or shifts and contrivances available in wild countries. A very Victorian title. His inventions included a printing telegraph, which was the forerunner of the teletype, an improved oil lamp, a device for picking locks, a rotary steam engine, and a periscope to let him see over taller people in crowded places, Galton being rather short. He devoted much energy to the British Association for the Advancement of Science, presenting numerous papers on a wide range of topics over a 40-year period, and serving as its general secretary for some years. One particular area of science which interested him was meteorology. He realized that if simultaneous weather data could be collected from a number of places by means of the newly developed telegraph and then mapped, significant weather patterns might thus be discovered, thus originating the modern weather map. In part, this consisted of joining places of the same barometric pressure, which he discovered described roughly circular, low-pressure and high-pressure systems, that is, cyclones and anticyclones, whose movements across the land were a basis for predicting the weather. Another interest was fingerprints. 
Galton writing the first detailed account of fingerprint analysis and identification, and on the basis of statistical evidence, recommending it as an extremely reliable means of differentiating one individual from another. Galton's major intellectual interest, however, became the inheritance of intelligence, the topic of the next video, and he wrote extensively on that subject over several decades. Other interests in psychology included the lexical hypothesis, that is the idea that language terms reflect the personality types and differences that are considered important in a society. He also invented the word association test. To study associative thinking, he drew up a list of 75 stimulus words and then recorded his associations with each as he viewed them one by one. He then repeated this procedure several times, not being surprised to discover that he frequently came up with the same associations on the second or third viewing as on the first. But, more significantly, he realized that many of these associations sprang from his own experiences and that other people were unlikely to have the same associations. Subsequently, word association tests have become a leading way of studying individual personality traits. He also did research into the ability to summon up mental images. Galton found that whilst many non-scientists thought in vivid images, scientists seemed to think in purely abstract terms. He speculated that the ability to summon up sharp mental images hindered thinking in highly generalized and abstract terms. On the basis of anecdotal evidence, and presumably his own prejudices as a Victorian male, he argued that personality differences between men and women could be explained in evolutionary terms as making for better sexual selection, with women being characterized as naturally capricious and coy, reflecting their justifiable hesitancy in courtship, whilst men's perceived straightforwardness reflected their competition in courtship. He also devised several important concepts that form the basis for modern mathematical statistics, the topic of the third video. Galton was knighted in 1909, thus Sir Francis Galton, less than two years before his death. He was then 87.